We will now study the electrical emergency configuration. We will demonstrate the case when the system is powered from the rat. For that, we will assume that the green hydraulic circuit is already faulty. Note, if the green hydraulic system, which actuates the emergency generator, was supplied by an engine-driven pump instead of the rat, more electrical power would have been available. This limited amount of power will lead to the shedding of some equipment or electrical buses. As there are a lot of events which happen at the same time in the aircraft, we will present them in a sequential order. Let's assume we are in flight and no previous faults have occurred. As you can see, the first consequence is that the power supply for the first officers PFD and ND, the captain's ND and the lower ECAM is lost. The standard operating procedure recommends in such a case that the captain flies the aircraft while the first officer does the ECAM action. Observe that on the emergency electrical power panel, the red Emergen fault light is on, meaning that the emergency generator is not yet online. Observe that the Emergen light has disappeared. The emergency generator is now running and supplying the network. Note, the captain's ND would have been restored if the green hydraulic system was supplied by an engine-driven pump instead of the RAT. Read the title of the failure. The red Emer config title means that you are in an electrical emergency configuration. The red message, Land ASAP, recommends to land at the nearest suitable airport as soon as possible. The pilot flying will ask you to perform the ECAM actions. You will try to reset the generators. Here, this will be done for you. The reset of the generators has not been successful. Before continuing with the procedure, Let's look at how to access an ECAM page when the lower ECAM is not available. An ECAM page can be called up on the upper ECAM by pressing and holding its associated push button switch on the ECAM control panel. The page is displayed on the upper ECAM as long as the associated key is maintained pressed. Notice that the Emergen box and its parameters have appeared. The emergency generator 
supplies the AC essential bus and the essential TR. Note also that the AC essential shed bus is shed due to the limited power of the rat. The white indication at the bottom of the page means that the commercial equipment is also shared. To see the DC part, you have to call the ECAM Electrical DC page. Notice the emergency generator supplying the essential TR, which in turn supplies the DC essential bus. The DC essential bus shared is also shared due to the limited power of the rat. As soon as the key is released, the engine warning display is back on the upper display. As the previous reset of the generators was not successful, we will carry on with the procedure. The bus tie push button switch in the off position segregates the two sides of the system. By doing this, a short circuit can be isolated and might give you the possibility to reset one generator. The procedure asks you to try to reset the generators again. Here, this will be done for you. Again, the reset of the generators has not been successful. As the next steps concern other systems, we will stop here and study the indications on the right side of the engine warning display. Notice the green arrow. It indicates that other failure messages and their associated procedures are stacked after the Emir config one. The list of affected systems is displayed on the right engine warning display memo. We will now assume that all the procedures have been reviewed. As you clear the last one, memo messages appear on the engine warning display. The green Emergen memo message indicates that the emergency generator is running and supplying the system. The green rat out appears when the rat is not fully stowed. We will now jump to the approach phase. The status page has been called for you. You can read on the approach procedure that you will have to switch the land recovery push button switch on. This will allow you to recover the necessary systems for the approach and the landing, e.g. ILS1, 
Slats Flaps Channel 1, LGCIU1 and BSCU1 will be recovered. The ECAM Electrical AC page has been called for you. For training purposes, the ECAM Electrical DC is also shown. The Land Recovery AC and DC buses are now connected, which is shown by green indications on both ECAM Electrical pages. As the system is powered by the RAT, at SLATS extension, the emergency generator will be inhibited and the supply will be automatically transferred to the batteries. Set Flap 1. For training purposes, both ECAM pages are shown. Notice the amber indications for the essential TR which is no longer supplied by the emergency generator. The DC essential bus is supplied from both batteries as indicated by the amber arrows. As the battery discharge currents are high, the current indications are displayed in amber. Observe that the Emergen title has turned amber, while the static inverter parameters are now shown. The AC essential bus is supplied from the DC essential bus via the static inverter. On the ground, at low speed, the DC BAT bus is automatically connected to the batteries. For training purposes, both ECAM electrical pages are shown. We will now review some indications we did not have the opportunity to see when performing the previous procedures. As we have just seen, as a result of the loss of all two main generators, the emergency generator normally runs automatically to power the electrical network. During the emergency generator connection time, the electrical system is powered from the batteries. The approximate flight time on batteries is 30 minutes. Let's see what happens if the emergency generator fails to run automatically. If the emergency general fails to start, a specific line appears in the emergency elect procedure, telling you to manually switching it on, using the man on guarded push button. The Emergen fault light extinguishes as soon as the emergency generator is supplying the system.
If the emergency generator is not working, the red fault light stays illuminated on the emergency general indicator. This failure causes the aircraft to be powered only from the batteries. For training purposes, both ECAM ELEC pages are shown. In case of an overload detection in the electrical system, and if the automatic shedding has not occurred, an ECAM procedure is triggered, and a fault light comes on on the galley push button switch. The galley shed all galleys. The generator 2 parameters are now back to normal. The white galley shed message indicates the new status of the galleys. The commercial push button switch enables the crew to switch off commercial equipment in the cabin, for example, galleys, passenger entertainment system, lavatory, and cabin lights. The commercial off message appears in white at the bottom of the page. If the commercial equipment is manually switched off or automatically shed in case of failure, note that this message has priority over the other galley messages.